In this problem, we are looking at an application of slope and intercepts as well as the graph of an equation. We're given the equation h equals 2s plus 50 is used to estimate a woman's height in inches h based on her shoe size s. So we can tell from the equation right off the bat that the input is s the output is h so this is s is where x would typically be and h is where y would typically be so we're going to go ahead and label our graph s size and h which is height in inches so with part a we're asked to estimate the size or estimate the height of a child who wears women's shoe size zero so that means s equals zero the shoe size is zero so to find the estimated height we simply plug in s equals zero to our equation so h equals two times zero plus fifty which equals zero plus fifty which equals 50 inches. So according to our equation, according to our equation, an estimate of the height for a woman who wears a shoe size of 0 would be 50 inches. With part B, we're asked to estimate the height of a woman whose shoe size is 8. So that simply means S equals 8. She wears a size 8 shoe. So we substitute s equals 8 into our equation. h height in inches equals 2 times 8 plus 50, which equals 16 plus 50, which equals 66 inches. Now with part c, we're asked to interpret the slope and h-intercept of the equation. So l let's go ahead and w I'm going to do things a little bit out of order. We're going to go ahead and move over to part D, the beginning of part D, just for a second to, to look at this better. Well, with H equals 2S plus 50, that means our slope equals 2, which equals 2 over 1, which equals rise over run which equals change in H because that's our vertical axis over change in S because that's our horizontal so we're looking at this means that the slope means for every one increase in shoe size, height increases by two inches. Or you could say for every increase in height of two inches, the shoe size increases by one. But I went with our dependent variable first, or our independent variable first, which is shoe size determining height. Now let's look at the y-intercept or Let's look at the h-intercept as, as we originally put it because that's the vertical axis. So the h-intercept, if we look at our equation here, b is 50. If we put this in y equals mx plus b form. So our h-intercept is 0, 50. So this is where I said I'm going to kind of go a little bit out of order. Before we interpret it, let's go ahead and graph our h-intercept. We'll call each one of these 10 units. 
So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 inches. 0, 50. Here's our Y or our H intercept. So what does that mean? Well, what's our shoe size at the H intercept? What's our shoe size at the H axis? It's 0. So what this means is... the estimated height of a woman with size zero shoes is 50 inches. And we already looked at that with part A where someone with a shoe size of zero was estimated to be 50 inches tall. So this is the interpretation of our slope. And this is the interpretation of our h-intercept. So we already have one point. We have our h-intercept. So in order to graph, we'll go ahead and use a couple more points. As since we have the equation in slope intercept form we could go ahead and uh, we could just use rise over run because we know our slope is 2 but I'm going to go ahead and plug in points because our scale it's it would be kind of hard to go down or it would be kind of hard to go up to and over 1 up to and over 1 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to plot a few points based on H and S. So we already know we've got one point when shoe size is zero. We know that height is estimated to be 50. Now it doesn't make any sense for shoe sizes really to be negative. I mean I suppose we could go to a, a child shoe or child shoe com size compared to a woman's shoe size to give it a woman's shoe size but it, for all intents and purposes we're going to stay in the first quadrant because it doesn't make any sense for shoe size to be less than than zero so let's start with 20 if our shoe size is 20 what is our height well h equals 2 times 20 plus 50 which equals 90 inches and actually I did this backwards because of our input and output let me go ahead and switch this table around real quick s is our input h is our output so our point would be sh So we're looking at S equals 20. So H equals 2 times 20 plus 50, which again we determined was 90 inches. So our point would be 20, 90. So we'll go 10, 20. And then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90. And then we'll go ahead and look at what if our shoe size was 10. H equals 2 times 10 plus 50, which equals 70 inches. So... 1070 is our other point. So over to 10 and then 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. It does line up with our other points. And then graphing through those three points. Now if we look at this, uh, if we have 90 inches that's 90 divided by 12. 
So that's seven, seven point five feet. So that's seven feet twelve inches. So really, chances are this isn't going to go over this far. I don't know anyone that's that that's over seven feet tall. But this would be the graph of the equation h equals 2s plus 50 where s is shoe size and h is height.